Recently, I had a terrible experience and I want you to listen to my story. Because of that incident, I have developed a fear of going out and I'm suffering from trauma. Even though I am naturally shy and hate trouble, I got involved in such a horrible thing. Have you ever had something like that happen to you? I was walking in the city when I was approached by a gang member. I had seen people like him before since I had to pass through the downtown area on my way back from work, but I never thought I would be approached myself. Moreover, I wasn't even looking at him or approaching him, but he deliberately bumped into me. I was actually trying to avoid him because he was coming my way, and I was scared. Even though it was just a shoulder bump, I was scared. So I thought about running away, but he suddenly started shouting at me. You bumped into me and don't even apologize? I'm hurt because of you. My shoulder might have dislocated from being bumped into. Give me compensation already. That's what he said. He bumped into me, so I was really confused, but I couldn't say anything back. I was so scared that I couldn't move. So, I'm sorry, was the best I could do. I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought that apologizing was the only way. But his real goal was my money, so of course he wouldn't let me go just because I apologized. Do you think you can be forgiven with just a small apology like that? I got hurt because of you. Do you even know who I am? He shouted and glared at me. But of course, I didn't know who he was so I looked down and remained silent. Then he introduced himself. I'm sure you've heard of the XX gang. I belong to them. I have an important patrol to do, but here you are injuring me. Like that? I had heard of the gang before. They were the ones who controlled that busy district. But I didn't live around there, so it was natural that I had no connection to them. Besides, he couldn't possibly be hurt from just bumping shoulders. And I wanted him to stop picking a fight over nothing. But because of my personality and the fact that he was scary, I couldn't say anything back and I ended up apologizing over and over again. I'm really sorry. I'll be careful from now on. I repeated this several times, but he said, Hey, you even hear what I said? Apologies won't even be worthy a penny. If you feel that bad, you just give me money now. You're dressed up all nicely, so you must be an office worker or something, right? If you can't pay now, you can come to our office later. I couldn't take it anymore when he said those things to me. I just wanted to escape. Even though it was a busy street with people around, nobody helped me because they were all scared. I desperately wanted to get away from that place, so I thought about calling the police. When I tried to take out my phone, he seemed to understand what I was about to do and immediately took it away from me. Hey, what were you planning to do with your phone? You're the one who hurt me. If you have a problem with that, I could call our lawyer out here. Since he didn't look like he could be a gang boss, I knew he was all talk. But still, fear overwhelmed me and I couldn't do anything. After that, the man kept yelling at me and I finally gave in. Um, how much should I pay you? I asked him while trying to take out my wallet from my bag, but he just grinned and said, Two grand in cash right now. If you don't have it with you, I can go to the ATM with you. He said that with a smirk on his face and pointed at the ATM machine. As expected, I didn't have that much money, but I didn't want to go to the ATM to withdraw cash either. I panicked, but luckily the police arrived just in time. Apparently, someone had reported it to the police and he saw them. He clicked his tongue and said, I know your face now. Be ready to pay next time we meet. He left those words behind and ran away somewhere. Although nothing serious happened, I couldn't forget his face, and it's difficult to take the same route home from work every day. Taking a taxi every day would be expensive and there's nobody to walk home with since nobody at work goes the same way. I can't ask anyone to take a detour just to walk with me either. I heard that the police are called to that busy street all the time, but those people never disappear. Maybe I should talk to my parents about this. I realized that if I were to face that guy again, I wouldn't be able to escape. Thinking about it made me feel depressed every day and I didn't want to go outside. 
I thought about telling my parents, but I didn't want to worry them. Then the worst happened, and I encountered that gang guy again after work. Hey, you're that chick from last time, right? Do you have money on you today? As expected, he approached me. But there were more people around this time, so I managed to escape by blending in. He didn't chase me after, but he shouted loudly. Don't think you can keep running away every time. I was really scared again, so I made up my mind and talked to my parents about it. I wanted to talk to them face to face, but I didn't want to go out much other than going to work, so I called them. My father answered the phone when I called home. He's the kind of person who gets angry very quickly, so I wanted to talk to my mother first before talking to him. But I ended up telling him the whole story. As expected, he was furious and scolded me. Why didn't you call me sooner? I took it as a sign of love, but the problem started from there. Later, my father contacted me. I'm going to meet that scumbag who bothered you. I'm going to the gang's office now. You should come with me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, I thought. My father has always been fearless and has never tolerated immorality. I don't know how I became the person I am today despite being raised by such a strong father. Anyway, I could easily imagine that he would take me with him even if it meant forcing me. So, I stopped resisting and went along with him. As soon as we arrived at the office of the gang, my father boldly walked inside, not even hesitating for a second. Of course, the men inside tried to stop him, but he shouted at them with a fierce tone. Bring him to me now. I was scared inside and didn't know what to do. Then, someone, presumably the leader, noticed the commotion and told the men to let us pass. So, my father and I were allowed to enter the room. I wanted to go home desperately, but the man who had bothered me was also in the room and approached me with a smirk on his face, saying, Oh. I've seen your face before. Did you come with your daddy to pay up? But the one who controlled him was the leader who said, Hey, you better shut up. He apologized to us. Well, to be exact, he apologized to my father and said, What brings you here? Did our people do something wrong? He spoke with a modest tone. At first, I didn't know what was going on. The underlings who were watching him were also puzzled. In response to the leader's words, my father glared at the man who had bothered me and said, It seems that this man has been bothering my daughter. Apparently, he intentionally bumped into her and demanded money. Judging by his attitude towards my daughter just now, this seems to be true. In response, the boss sighed and said, I'm sorry for the trouble my people caused. We'll make sure not to cause any more problems from now on. Then he bowed his head to me and said, I'm sorry for scaring you. I'll tell him never to come near you again. Please, rest assured. I don't understand what was going on and could only reply with a confused, Huh? I was relieved to think that the situation was resolved, but then my father raised his voice. I won't be satisfied until the man over there apologizes. Hey, you! You've given my daughter a serious trauma. You need to take responsibility for this. The lower-ranking gang, who seemed confused by the leader bowing his head, stood there, staring alternately at the leader in my father's face. Um, boss, who is this guy here? He asked timidly while trembling. Then the leader introduced my father to everyone. This man right here is a high-ranking police officer. We should avoid getting involved with him. In fact, my father is a police superintendent, the second highest rank in the police organization. Perhaps my father and the gang leader had met before, and the leader judged that it would be best for the organization to give in this time. The gang who heard this suddenly changed his expression. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. He apologized, but my father was not satisfied and yelled at him. Do young people these days not even know how to apologize properly? I didn't tell you to bow down to me, but at least lower your head. Kneel down, right now. My father yelled at the underling. I didn't know what to do and remained silent. After checking the leader's face, the underling knelt down on the spot and said, I'm sorry for scaring your daughter. Then, my father said, 
What are you doing? What good does apologizing to me do? Apologize to my daughter who was scared by you. And don't come near my daughter again. He was furious. The underling obediently followed the order, and he promised never to approach me again. He was reminded again to bow his head, and I don't think he will bother me again. I don't really understand the world of the underworld, but I think what the boss says is absolute. Besides, he wouldn't forget my face after something like this happened, and he was so depressed that he couldn't even look me in the eye. He had changed like a different person and become submissive. He didn't even try to attack me anymore. My father asked if I was satisfied and I replied, It's enough. After that, the atmosphere in the room became a little more relaxed. My father reminded the underling once again and then we safely left the office. If anything happens, tell me right away, said my father with a gentle smile. I was so scared when I entered that my heart almost stopped. Not just that underling, but everyone who was there must remember my face. So it's actually scarier now. Well, they'll probably start avoiding me. And even if something happens, I think it'll be okay if I have the backing of the head. The way I said backing is a little weird, but in any case, thanks to my father, I feel a little better. Looking back, I should have talked to my father sooner. I should have done so without worrying so much. But because he was such a father, I was also worried that it would develop into a bigger problem. I really didn't want to worry him and I knew he would be angry like that. I guess things turned out nicely this time because of his anger. But my father knew a peaceful solution, so I should have left it all to him from the beginning. But again, he is a very busy person in his position, so I didn't want him to deal with that underling. I don't really understand, but I also felt like it would be a difficult situation with the police and the antisocial forces. In the end, nothing I was worried about happened and it was resolved quite peacefully. Even though that underling apologized to me, he only did what he was told. I know that as a fact, so I'm not sure if I can really believe him. So it's a bit complicated, but my father said the boss would take care of the rest. So maybe he'll suffer the consequences. Since he got involved with me, the police officer's daughter, maybe he learned a lesson not to do anything stupid, or he'll end up getting hurt. For me, it's much better to be like this than to be alone and worried. So I think it's good that it turned out this way. I'm not afraid of my commute anymore, and I don't think I have any worries about my life. I don't want to bother or worry my father anymore, so I want to be able to avoid trouble on my own. I think it's difficult to solve things like this on my own, but I sometimes think that they should be arrested for putting me in such a scary situation. But I don't want to have any more dealings with those people, and I don't want to trouble my father anymore, so I think this is good. Not an apology anyway. So for me, the most important thing is not to go through something like that again, rather than revenge. I don't want to be hated or resented. Even though my father and the leader are there to protect me, I think I consider this resolved. It's unfortunate that I probably won't be able to forget what happened to me but it gave me a chance to think about self-defense. So, I guess there were some takeaways from this incident. Of course, it would have been better not to have been involved, but for now, I'm happy that we were able to resolve this. I'll continue to live my life peacefully with gratitude. <laughs>